What's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to be talking about how Skaven are looking in the third edition of Age of Sigmar. And, spoiler alert, it's pretty good. So, uh, overall, they have a lot of benefits from third edition. They're all of like the little things that third edition gave us, they use really well. Um... They also just got an update in Broken Realms that made Clan Molder better and made your weapons teams better. So they're definitely firing on all cylinders right now. Um, their GHB points adjustments were pretty fair. They were not ridiculous. Um, I felt pretty good about all of those. They have a lot of really strong hero monsters. That is all of the Vermin Lords plus Thankful. Um, they're all really good and take advantage of, you know, all of the hero abilities and monster abilities really well, as well as just being good for all of the other reasons that they're there. They're more survivable now, uh, even when they were quite survivable before. Um, we have some strong shooting components that we can use Unleash Hell on. Um, Skaven notoriously has really good shooting, and Unleash Hell just is a great... Uh, little addition to that they this is an army that did not need a stand and shoot but here we are and um the reinforcement rules actually may have helped skaven a little bit in some areas uh you can take units of 60 clan rats now you could only take 40s before so uh that, that's pretty awesome um, two units of 60 would uh, definitely be a major headache for your opponent to deal with, especially since they're probably also going to be immune to battle shock, as we will be seeing as we go through this. Um, new coherency rules don't really do anything to Skaven. They're a horde army to begin with for the majority of their units, and other stuff doesn't really care too much about that. Um, so... It, you know, your Storm Fiends are not really concerned with uh, coherency. They can just kind of clump up and put their short-range stuff in the front and medium-range stuff in the middle and their melee stuff in the back. And uh, if they get charged, they can just pile in and get their melee stuff in. All right. So their wins are just this, like, grab bag. So we've got Warp Lightning Cannons, Warp Fire Throwers, Storm Fiends with Warp Fire Throwers, and Thank Bull with Warp Fire Throwers that all have shooting attacks that don't have a hit roll, which means they don't have the minus one to hit penalty of Unleash Hell. So they're getting full effect of their shooting attack, which is also spraying mortal wounds not just regular hits, um, they're really good. They're really difficult to charge. Thankful, in particular, with four warp fire throwers, I mean, the only things that can really go after him are, like, monsters and shooting attacks. If you charge any number of models into him, they, they would have to be super elite to actually be able to get past the warp fire throwers and then they have to actually take down 13 wounds of thankful so he's really good um definitely making his way into a lot of lists now as i mentioned before our skaven clan rats can be taken in groups of up to 60 um on the downside are Storm Vermin can only be taken in 30s now, but they're still really good. Uh, 30 is a good number for them. Vermin Lords, uh, they have access to that universal spell lore, and Flaming Weapon is really good for them. Um, they're all double casters and often are sort of wanting for a spell to cast. They don't get access to any of the Skaven spell lores, so now they get the universal spell lore to boost them up a little bit. Plague Priests, 85 points. They can use Curse, which that is the universal prayer that allows you to... Um, target a unit nine inches away 
and every six to hit that unit does a mortal wound. Combines really nice with clan rats that are already in combat. Um, very good in general. Um, the additional CP that you get that amplifies the master clan ability to get uh, command points back when you use them. So they are just awash in command points now and have a decent number of good command points, to, or I'm sorry, good command abilities to use them on. So you're kind of firing them all off all the time, which is pretty cool. So let's talk for a minute about Vermin Lords. They're all heroes, they're all monsters, they're all wizards. They absorb buffs from all sorts of different places and do that really well. They all can take Flaming Weapon except for Lord Screech because he's unique. Uh, so many of those, for example, the Vermin Lord Corruptor, it doubles his damage output. He's got 10 attacks, I believe, on 3s and 3s. Rend 1, 1 damage, and this makes it 2 damage. 10 attacks on 2 damage is a lot. Um, each one of them is definitely solid and has different uses, and I think you're going to probably see 1 to 2 of these in every list now. They're really strong monsters. They all have good abilities. They all play different roles. Your... Deceiver has a weapon with Rend 3. That's really powerful. Your Warbringer uh, can get some serious buffs added to him to do lots of damage. Um, your Warp Seer now just has all of the command points available to just basically make the whole board immune to Battle Shock all the time. That is very, very strong. Um, they're all durable. They all uh, have a 5-up ward save, Well, which actually isn't a ward save. Um, so you can put Amulet of Destiny on them and get a 5-up 5-up in addition to their normal 4-up save and the 3-up on the Warp Seer. Um, overall, like these are all very powerful. Um you can use Skitter Leap and Dreaded Skitter Leap together to score Savage Spearhead really easily uh, and get the bonus because it's two monsters. So um, also having two Vermin Lords in your back lines is pretty good. Um, not a lot of opponents are going to want to deal with that, especially if one of them is a Deceiver. It It's really good. I really like Vermin Lords a lot. They're... They already had decent offensive output, and now being able to give them uh, their finest hour and the monster buffs, they're just that much better. And getting to use Flaming Weapon as well just really increases their combat output. A lot of these were sort of support pieces a little bit before, and now I think they're going to be much more offensive. So some things that kind of hurt Skaven a little bit. Um, reinforcements. Storm Vermin, as I said, are limited to 30. Plague Monks are limited to 20, unless you're in Pestilence, then they can be 30. Scryer Acolytes, limited to 10, unless you're in Scryer, then you can get 15. Those I was running in 20s before, and I might be putting them on the shelf because I don't think 10 models is really enough with them to get the output that you want. Um, the new Molder rules, they buff Rat Ogres, but the reinforcement limits really limit you to four of them or a unit of six if you're going straight Molder. And it feels like you might want bigger units than that, and especially since you can only put those uh, enhancements um, on one unit of Rat Ogres. Also, you know, you have a lot of things that you want to reinforce in Skaven, so spending one of your reinforcement points on Rat Ogres might not necessarily be the best move. So it, it, that one is sort of a bit of a push and pull you know, which thing do you actually want to spend your reinforcement points on? And it might be Rat Ogres, you know, but 
Um, you're probably not going to be using, using packs of six, but because of the coherency rules, packs of four are actually really nice. So, some up and down on Rad Ogres. Vermin Lord Warp Seer, he no longer re rolls his saves with his Scry Orb. It's now plus one to save, which means any other plus one to saves that you give him are uh, just negating rend. They're not giving him additional save buffs. Um, strength in numbers, that is the plus one to hit and plus one to wound, depending on the size of your unit. That kind of limits your all out attack ability. Um, Skaven are going to be really limited with what they can do with all out attack because they just can't take um, more than plus one to hit. That also, you know, wheeling back around, that negatively impacts Plague Monks as well because they're not able to get up to enough models to reliably keep their full strength and numbers bonus unless you're purely pestilence so definitely some negatives there but overall i think skaven came out really well in third edition i'm definitely happy i have a skaven army i've already put them on the table once and they were a lot of fun i want to do that more um i think at the moment my um nurgle might be hitting the shelf temporarily for Cities of Sigmar and Skaven uh, to get some mixing up in what I'm playing and uh, get to experience some other rules in 3rd edition. Um, maybe one of the sort of downsides a little bit in Skaven as well is they basically take advantage of all of the new 3rd edition rules because they play in every phase really well. and. The downside to that is there is going to be a major mental tax on you for playing Skaven. You have a lot more things to remember. So break out your cheat sheets and um, hopefully that will help you out. Thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and you can come support us on Patreon if you are interested in being so generous. Uh, links for that down below as well as links to Facebook and Twitter so you can join us there. That's it for now guys. Enjoy kill killing the man things and I will talk to you later.